Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Don't know why they want to persecute me, because I don't talk to women. All women do is laugh and sing and say the word pussy. Yeah, ask any doctor and he'll tell you that. This is episode 167, recorded October 28th, 2020. I am your host, Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-host, Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. Joining me tonight is Crystal Cleveland, the living dead girl, and co-host of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. How are you, Crystal? Well, I'm doing great, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing tonight? Yeah, it's, it's getting good. close to Halloween. To, I know it's, it's not going to air around that time, but yeah. That's a good thing we're not women because you wouldn't be talking to us. Or anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Also yeah. joining us is Chad Hunt, comic book artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, the Classic Era, and Decades of Horror, the 1970s, and director with Wreak Havoc Film Productions. How are you, Chad? Jeff, I am super awesome. My dog food smells a little funny, but <laughs> everything's fine. Oh, yeah. Fine. yeah. yeah it's, prime, it's prime cut, though. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, <laughs> what? My dog loves it. The dog loves yeah. it. It smells fun. Last but not least, this is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, and special effects guru, and co host of Decades of Horror, the 1970s, and all around nice guy. Bill, how are you doing? Who smells their dog food? Me. I mean, it shouldn't <laughs> smell bad. If it doesn't smell bad, you open the wrong can. I mean, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I, yes, I'm doing fine. I got to go to the Wreck Havoc Film Festival and I saw Chad's directorial debut. And it oh, was, you were there? I was there, yes. I Everyone totally was there except for you. Crystal. I, I was right. there. Yeah. No, we were both there the first night. They showed oh, both okay. nights. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. right. Oh, I, you wouldn't have missed me. Come on. Um, but it was, and, and that's, that, I gotta say, I was very impressed with that venue. Um, it looks good. Yeah. If you get a chance to go there, to go to that uh, movie theater whose name escapes me. Uh, so I'm not giving any clues here, but it's in Winston Salem and they are putting on a marketplace really cinema. Marketplace, marketplace cinema. Yes, it is. They have a great. So projector. was that a drive-in or yeah. Just... yeah. yeah. They yeah. painted nice. the whole side of the building in a really good color, good, good white. White. reflective mm -hmm. paint they have a very strong projector and i was thinking ah, this is going to look eh, eh, eh. no it looked fine it looked really good it looked as good as a a drive-in oh, like cool. back in the old days so they got a yeah. nice big parking lot they could turn off the street lights definitely a good experience i highly recommend it so how did you get the sound uh radio. through it's through the radio they yeah, from radio. okay cool yeah very cool so it's as good as your radio you know and hey our, our radio stuff is way better than the sound was back mm. in the day when mm. Oh, God. Yeah. But the one thing we don't have nowadays is movies like Ms. 45, which were the kind of things that they would show at the drive-ins. And I wish that would come back. Mm -hmm. I wish the drive-ins would come back. And I wish the movies they used to show in the drive-ins would come back. Yeah. I'd, like to, I'd like to write them. <laughs> well, I think they're starting to come back a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. All right. So <laughs> we, we know our topic. Our topic is a film called Ms. 45, directed by Abel Ferreira, starring Zoe Tamerless. A.K.A. Zoe Tamerless Lund, A.K.A. Zoe Tamerlane, A.K.A. Zoe Lund. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, this is about a timid and mute seamstress who goes insane after being attacked and raped twice in one day, in which she takes to the streets of New York City after dark and randomly shoots men with a forty-five caliber pistol. There you uh, go. Yeah. Pretty good. It, it, yeah. it starts out not quite so randomly, but but gets fairly random. Yeah, at the end. Uh, this was produced by Navaron Films. Release date is April twenty fourth, nineteen eighty one. Also known as Angel of Vengeance in Australia, and yeah. I love this one uh, in West Germany. It is Die Frau mit der Forty Five er. Well, actually, Der Frau mit der Fünfundvierziger Magnum. 
Huh. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Yeah. And the woman with the 45 Magnum. Now, I don't know if she had a Magnum or not. It's interesting that how Germany always wants to change the title. Yeah. But uh, I have fun. All right. This was shot in New York City. Oh, yeah. The corner of Mott and Pell Street. For those of you uh, that are familiar with that, the Baskin Robbins scene, anyway, there's a, a mm-hmm. Baskin Robbins prominently displayed. Uh, also in Central Park. And let's see, where else? Uh, some in Chinatown, apparently, and Bethesda Fountain in Central Park. That's where a gang circles Thana oh, in that yeah. sort of in the round kind of thing. I have no information on filming dates. Uh, the budget is estimated at sixty-two thousand, which I think that's okay. low. You know, but Farrar was one of those guys who would, you know, they didn't, they didn't pay for permits. Let's put it that way. Oh, well, okay. So, uh, yeah, well, there was that. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. I have no idea what the box office was. And we have a few taglines. Here we go. Chad, you up to it or should I do it? <laughs> uh, do it. These are always gold. Yeah. <laughs> Crime will no longer roam the streets. What was that? Wait, what? is that droopy? Yeah, what? Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was abused and violated it will never happen again until she gets home and then it happened again right right oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. here we go she's number one with a bullet know her name waka waka number one with a bullet mm-hmm. i get it yeah, yeah. See where yeah. they went there. it's no longer a man's world no man will ever be safe again ever well ask any doctor he'll tell you these are all pretty dreadful taglines, but luckily for this movie, it had a kick-ass poster. Yeah, yeah, it did. yeah, it did. That is a good poster. Like, I would um, hang that proudly on my wall. Mm-hmm. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out if it was MS period point forty five or MS. <laughs> <laughs> all right. First impressions, first time seeing this film. How does it compare now? Chad. Well... Um, I've seen this movie a couple of times. Um, I've rented it a few times uh, back in back in the day when it first came out on VHS. VHS. No, normally, I I hate I hate these kind of uh, rapey movies like mm-hmm. Last House on the Left and so I Spit on Your Grave. I know those are held in high esteem with some people. As it's just not my it's just not my bag. I mean, some people think those are are classics and and maybe some people they are but i i i just can't stomach those kind of i i had four sisters so yeah. you know what goes through my mind when i watch something like that so i i can't separate it i can't separate the movie from thinking now i gotta beat up some guy that talks to my sister you know or, or you know that kind of thing so going into it the first time i saw it and within the first five minutes of the movie, she's been raped twice. I was like, Oh man, no, no, no. But I, I kept watching it. I, I gave it a shot and it really, it ended up being a little bit better than what that movie usually, that kind of movie usually is. You know, she ended up pretty much becoming a, a female punisher, you know, with Marvel from the Marvel comics character. And, it sort of told a story about this girl who uh, who became so obsessed with revenge and and uh, without her having to say a word. You yes, know, uh, that was right. that was what really really got me. That you know she's not saying anything, but you understand how she feels. You you kind of know what her state of mind is and and where where what her motivation is and everything, which I thought was kind of a step above that the normal that normally what that kind of movie is so yeah and and i'm not a a huge abel ferrara fan i like some of his movies i think the next movie of his i saw was bad lieutenant which anybody that wants to see harvey keitel's full frontal nude scene is (laughs) i have no idea why you'd want to see something like that but anyway but i wasn't really impressed with bad lieutenant but 
there's a couple that I do like, uh, Kings of New York and, and, and this one, Miss 45. Uh-huh. It, it's just a step above the, the normal kind of, it's exploitation, but it, it tried to be something better than just an, an exploitation film, I feel. So, uh, and, yeah, and it still holds up. It's not, it's not a long, drawn-out movie. I mean, things happen at a pretty quick pace, and, and the movie, the plot moves along pretty fast. You know, and I, I like it still today. It's still the same. Uh, I, still, I still like it. You know, I'll, I'll never switch the channel if I see it, if I come across it or see it on TV or something. But, but yeah, it, it still holds up very well to this day, I think. Yeah, it, it is interesting. Uh, Crystal Cleveland, when was the first time you saw this? Uh, yesterday was the first time <laughs> I saw this movie. Uh-huh. 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 So, okay, I have I I can't really compare it to the first time I saw it, but um, so it's kind of interesting because these rape scenes were nothing to me. I typically like they can bother me, but like I spit on your graves, rape scenes way worse. Yeah. than this yeah. these were at least like really relatively quickly the second time was a little bit longer but i kind of knew what was coming when she grabbed the mm-hmm. apple so i was like okay so thankfully i don't think that they were they were too rough i mean they didn't really show any nudity they didn't show any nudity actually um so that was that was kind of different especially for a movie of this time mm-hmm. but this freaking movie this this chick she just totally goes off the rails like it's it, it's just insane to me like how she just like makes the switch and but i loved it i think it's hilarious though because she's just like you could just see her like sitting there staring at someone and then she's like yeah i'm <laughs> ready to die and yeah. she was like Oh, she's like, actually, my favorite is when she, the photographer, the, that freaking wretched photographer that oh, was yeah. like, yeah, mm-hmm. and she doesn't even get off the elevator. I was like, that's smart. That was smart. <laughs> that's well played. I mean, I guess you knew it wasn't going to turn out well for her, but I was kind of hoping it was. Mm-hmm. I was sad when she got caught. Mm-hmm. I wanted her to, you know be able to make it through you know and then oh and then it's so sad sister yeah. but yeah i don't know it's a it's a very female empowering type film in a way and i really like that about it too it's like she's like no nope. and i like that it's like the guys may not seem like they're the worst but but they're just awful it's like yeah. dude <laughs> it's just it's it's like dude and i've ha- i've met guys like this like I mean, I kept saying this when I was watching. I was like, yeah, I've dealt with guys like that. I've dealt with guys mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. They think that you should talk to them because they want to talk to you. No, that's not the way it works, dude. I don't want to talk to you. Leave me alone. Yeah. Bye-bye. You know, it's, it's just nice. shocking to me how messed up guys some some guys are in the head. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you deserve to die. I have no patience or tolerance for that. It's just, but yeah, so I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have much mercy so that was no. kind of nice that was cool that, that was oh, cool. She yeah. did. oh she did uh bill mulligan when was the first uh, time you saw this i i read an article about this and i i thought it was in that that great book research 10 incredibly strange films but now i'm thinking it probably wasn't but it was an interview with her and it had a few shots from it and somewhere i saw i i I, they ha- they showed the scene with her in the park, which is just a brilliant scene, brilliantly filmed, totally out of context. But I said, "Whoa, this this looks really cool," and so I had to seek it out and finally got to see it on um, video. I'm sure, and I I really liked it then. I really like it now. It's um, it's so stylish, you know, that low budget movie, but with a lot of style, just great camera angles, and a star making performance from someone who really should have been a star. And it's, it's, mm. a, it's a great tragedy, self-inflicted, self-inflicted. I mean, there's nothing you can say about, it. you know, a lot of folks get lost to drugs, but um, uh, Zoe Lund was almost unique in that she wrote about heroin. She wrote about heroin uh. in ways that made you want to try heroin. She loved heroin and raved about it. And eventually it killed her, which is how that story pretty much always mm. ends. And it, it's, it's mm-hmm. too bad because 
She's fantastic in this movie, and she better be, because next to, except for maybe A Clockwork Orange, is there any movie that has one actor whose face is pretty much in the camera more than she is in Ms. 45? The movie yes. is her, 100%. The, the Robert Palmer right. Addicted to Love video. They were... There you go. <laughs> yes. Yes. Which, which it kind of reminds me. That's exactly that, 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 what I was going to say. That's what know, she looked like. Yeah, that's what she looked like. Makeup. She's she's beautiful in, in an unusual way. She has a, a real innocence about her. This, you know, vulnerability. And that makes the switch toward the end. The scene at the at the end where she's the, the nun mm-hmm. is just great. It's like yeah. a scene from hell. It really yeah. if it has. It has this just just and besides yeah. the the saxophone wailing in the background like a lost soul the slow motion photography she's dressed up as a nun it seems like a dream from i don't know it, this movie is is so cool now is it is it perfect you know i mean it's a rape movie and, and yeah that's like my least favorite genre on earth the rape scenes i thought they were pretty unpleasant but yeah nothing like i spit on your grave but i spit on your grave is the standard by which no film should ever aspire to. It's yeah, terrible. It's mm-hmm. Even as a revenge flick. And I do get the whole argument, rape is ugly and therefore it should be ugly. But you know what? After about five minutes, I'm uglied out. I've got all the ugliness yeah. I need. The The scenes here went on, for my taste, a little longer than they needed to. I mean, good God, hit him on the head already. Got <laughs> in your hand. But I guess she was waiting for the gun to drop. Now I understand. But, uh, you know, they were unpleasant, but you, you got the feel. You could see where she would fracture. That Having that happen to you twice in one day mm-hmm. uh-huh. would just break her. Absolutely. But, and, and, okay, you got, it's got to be said. I hope to God <laughs> that the average American woman is not going to meet as many horrible men in their life as, as these people do. <laughs> Literally everyone they meet, every single person you meet, except for maybe the blind man, is a pig, is is awful. You don't feel bad at all about them dying. <laughs> um, they're they're all terrible. It's it's that seems a little unrealistic. But then again, I'm not a good looking woman walking down the street having these jerks who seem to think this is going to work, cat calling you and everything else. So I will I will um, yield to uh, Crystal on her wisdom of just how often that happens. I don't know why guys do that because it, I, does it ever doesn't work? work? Could it no. ever work? No, it doesn't even matter if they were attractive or yeah. whatever. It would turn you off. But here's the thing, too. Like, the fact that she is mute, I think, mm. is also puts her at more at risk. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, yeah. guys like that always look for someone weak to prey on. Uh, and they did. So yeah. I do think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably not that likely that it would. It, I, I think that it's exaggerated as far as the timeline. Sure. But one woman running into all those guys, absolutely, especially in New York. <laughs> yeah, especially in the 80s. Well, this is when New York was still, it didn't look like uh, Disneyland, you know. I mean, it was still grimy. and It was early 80s, but it was still uh, a grimy, seedy place with just, uh, you know, and, and that was kind of dangerous. Yeah. So, so it wasn't, I don't think it was too far-fetched, uh, you know. New York is practically a co-star in this movie. I mean, yeah. we, we, some of the movies that we've done, like Maniac and um, uh, what was the other one? I was thinking yeah, any Maniac of the Larry Cop. Cohen movies, Maniac Cop, mm, you know, the Larry totally Cohen true. movies and everything. Yeah, they mm. they capture that vibe. And yeah. New York is just a, a, it was such a seedy, scary place back then. Um, and now you go there and I know some people mourn the loss of the 42nd street and everything. And yeah, there's something lost, but you can see why they wanted to move away from that. It may mm-hmm. look kind of sterile in Disneyland now, but it was pretty awful back then. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a uh, junior in high school, I took a, what they always called the yearly UN trip. <laughs> you know, you, you had to apply for it and that stuff. And you took a trip and you spent like, uh, three or four days in New York and you went to the UN and some theaters and stuff. And then you went to DC and did some stuff there. And the hotel that we stayed in was, I, I mean, the UN was in sight in one direction, but the other way was 42nd street. Yep. Which seemed really weird to me, but that for a 16 year old kid from Iowa, that was (laughs) an eye opener. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We did the exact (laughs) same thing. I mean, we're in upstate New York, so it was just a hundred miles away, but 
walking down 42nd Street, and my girlfriend at the time, not the sharpest knife in the drawer, we walk <laughs> by what is obviously a gay porn theater, and they're uh-huh. showing Boys in the Sand to even Sandy or whatever, and it's, <laughs> it has in, in big letters, all male cinema or all male cast. Yeah, that was it, all male cast. And she's like, oh, see, well, that's good. So they have X-rayed movies for women too. And we basically laughed at her for the next, you know, <laughs> uh, 13 uh, blocks or so. Yeah. Just, yeah. The, the first time I even heard of this was from the Black Saint. Uh, mm. Santos Ellen Jr. mentioned it either on a podcast or else when I was on a podcast with him and we were chatting like afterwards about movies, I, I, and I wish I could remember which, but I, I kept an eye out till I could see it. Uh, and it was probably four years or, you know, if it was on a podcast, it was probably only uh, a couple of years ago that I first saw it, but it had, a, it made an impression on me. And I'm a, a little bit like Chad is that when it starts off, you're kind of turns your stomach. Cause the guy that, uh, the first rape scene who is mm-hmm. actually played by Abel Ferrara, right? Ooh. with that creepy mask on and mm-hmm. he just was, was anyway it was it was creepy and, and and but then you have seen this guy breaking into her apartment uh so okay. now you yeah. she goes home and, and has it again but you have some hope because they telegraph it a little bit by showing that apple and she's kind of gradually reaching for it and then when right. you drop you know so you know that they're probably something good's going to come from it. And after all, it is called Ms. 45. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. 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 You're just, you're kind of waiting for that to happen. Uh, Before I forget though, I I need to say something about the bill talked about the saxophone playing. Did you notice that the band in the party, the saxophone part was being played by the guy with the trumpet? Oh, wow. No. Very talented. (laughs) That's a useful talent. I played, I played saxophone and I'm going, Wait a minute! That's a saxophone, and that guy is going through all kinds saxophone. of air, air trumpet uh, playing. Anyway, Zoe Lund is captivating in this, and again, especially the way the story is told because she's mute. It's all show and tell, or it's all yeah. show, not tell. I should say, uh, almost all of it. You get a few lines where other people are talking to her, and you find out how insensitive people are. Everybody's talking to her and asking her questions and, uh, excuse me, but she's not going to answer you. Um, right. <laughs> I'm, and, and pelting things at her. I just couldn't imagine how confusing and frustrating that would be in that situation. Uh, so I think maybe because of that or whatever, but even before uh, she goes home, you get the idea she's she's kind of timid. She's the one that stands in the mm-hmm. background, doesn't say anything, and, and she kind of lets the boss uh, walk all over her and, so when she comes back afterward, after she's killed the one guy, she is she's different. And then she kind of goes through this makeover. But yet, the, another thing that I liked about it is as long as she had the gun, she seemed really strong and superhero-like. But if, if something went wrong, she kind of started to revert back to that. Um, yeah. Yeah. sort of timid personality right. or, or fear. Um, but the way she looks to begin with and the way she makes herself over are, I mean, she's a, she's a gorgeous woman in both cases, yeah. but, it, but it's such a totally different uh, look or emotion. Listen, to the freaking neighbor. I, why couldn't that uh, yeah. lady die? Okay. Cause she's like, <laughs> why, why, why do you have, so much makeup on oh my god your eyes and your lips oh, do, uh, what, what are you doing whose house do you get to stay at i was like oh my god we kill this lady and she was a we terrible kill. actress too <laughs> yeah, yeah she was she's a horror <laughs> <laughs> she was she was so bad she was compelling actually yeah i like I mean, I hated her, but I liked her too. I was, I, she yeah. added something for sure. And see, it just showed more of her character because she was clearly such a pushover. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, at first and, until she wasn't. But then but, she goes mm-hmm. after the dog. 
Oh, yeah. that's she where it does. She did nothing to the Steve. dog. She did I nothing she did, to the. You know what's that so was awesome? the best part of the movie for me when the dog I, came. It's so funny. It was so funny. Well, that, Actually, that was the happy ending, which is, yeah, to me, yeah. is just so yes. so American. Oh, all this. Everyone we care about is dead. All all this carnage, but it's okay. Because the dog goes back to the awful lady, and because the nasty yeah. old lady gets the dog. Yeah. Yeah. There's a rotting head in the refrigerator, but the dog comes <laughs> yeah. back. In. Yay! Well, yeah. I, I knew she didn't. I knew she didn't hurt that dog because I was like, I even said it before it happened. I was like, but we don't know that she killed the dog because I just had a feeling that might be too right. sad for her. And then it just proved. I mean, it proved it when she didn't shoot the lady. She was only going after men. Right. Although mm-hmm. her trying to get that dog run over was my, my favorite part. That was pretty like, damn funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was Come like, on, is get she, trying to, right, is right. she trying to get the dog run over? I was dead. I was like, that's hilarious. <laughs> 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 that's and they're all so yelling awful. at her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was good. That was funny. Well, there's there's kind of mixed information about her. Uh, Wikipedia says they filmed it when she was 17 or, or maybe wow. it was, a uh, uh, some details or trivia in IMDB, but her bio says mm-hmm. she was 19 when it came out. So she would have been 17 in 1979. So if she was 17 when it was filmed, that means, uh, uh, it was filmed sometime during 1979. Um, yeah. She was very young and she looked very young and, the next time I saw her in a film, it felt like she had aged significantly. Now, of course, you, one does age significantly when you start out at 17 or 19 or whatever. But, you know, things took a toll on her, which, which is a real shame. Yeah. 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 Well, because she was she... also a talented writer. She was a yeah. good writer. Yeah. And, and I think she had a lot to offer. Ah. Oh, well. She did an episode of Miami Vice, and I'm just cross-checking this because uh, – Abel Ferreira directed a couple episodes too. Hmm. I don't know if they might be the same ones or not. Would oh. probably make sense. But anyway, um, yeah, I, th- I thought she was phenomenal. And actually, the way it was shot, and, and I don't know what kind of writing goes into something where the main character doesn't speak, but hmm. uh, the story was very well told, I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, and it made the fact that she couldn't speak and we could see her thought process when she was in her apartment alone. Then when she got into the, like at work or with other people, it just, they, all that talking just became irritating. You could see how that would just be really, right. I don't know, to me, that, that it was kind of irritating and annoying to her maybe. Um, I wish people would just leave me alone. I think it was one of the notes she gave. I wish they'd mm-hmm. just go away, something like that. Anyway, I do too. I get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a fun movie, and she starts off getting revenge on the bad guys, but then pretty soon it doesn't take much at all, and she shoots whoever right. she's coming across. <laughs> oh no, uh, God! Uh, I was like, when the guy said, I was like, well, surely she's not going to kill this guy, and then he says, and then I killed her cat, and I was like, oh, yep, I do. Yep. Bye. <laughs> She was trying to get a dog run over. She's got no moral ground to stand on. (laughs) Well, and the costume she wore to the Halloween party, too. Oh, that was great. The dog dog barked all the time, though. Okay. Okay. And here's the funniest part is that they clearly used a different dog barking in the background for most of it. Because I was like, Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I've got three dogs. I know how each dog sounds. And I know what a big dog sounds like. And they totally use this big dog bark in the background for a lot of it. I was like, that's not dog but okay so and the dog literally barked <laughs> all the time i think i'm hypersensitive to it because i try to make sure my dogs are quiet because i don't want the neighbors to feel that way you know i'm like nope yeah you guys hush you know because that's being a respectful neighbor unlike that lady yeah yeah and then the uh the building super or manager or whoever he was was oh my god yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You knew he was going down. It's a little creepy to me that Abel Ferrara played the first rapist. And, okay, listen, I wasn't there. For all I know, that was a request from her to be, you know, that it would be someone she trusted. They were friends. They worked Mm -hmm. together a lot and everything. But I always get kind of creeped out when I hear, you know, Quentin Tarantino or these, oh, yeah, that's my hand choking the the person there. I'm like, ooh. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's kind of like crossing some boundaries. 
I mean, there's always oh, he was he was about thirty, and she was about eighteen when the when it was filmed somewhere in that neighborhood. That well, one I mean, he, was he, really fast, though, and not very. Was. I I bet you that wasn't even very intimate, as far as like yeah. I don't think he even really touched her. Thankfully, and that's because like I watched that, and I'm like, there's been. I, I say that the rape scenes aren't bad, but I was prepared for them, and right. I kind of watched them from a perspective of how they're filmed, you know. Right. And I've seen so many more that I've been like, "Ugh, how yeah. uncomfortable that must have been to be to film." But these, like, even the guy raping her the second time, he, did you see how he was kind of like off of her? Really, actually, thankfully, right. you know, like I think the guys, whoever, thankfully, whoever right. was playing them was trying to be less. Yeah, uh, I thought part of what made and tell me if I get this wrong, but part of what made the uh, the first scene have more impact was the aftermath. It says that she kind of slide down into a puddle yeah. and she's pulling her underwear up and stuff, and right, that right. that almost made it look worse than the actual rape shot. Yeah. You know, filming of that scene uh, wasn't that graphic. Yeah, I mean, and, and give him credit. She was I mean, very degraded, though. It was it was definitely not shot in a way that is in any way titillating or erotic, unless there's yeah, something seriously yeah. wrong with you. And that that's as it should be. And and it it didn't go on forever. It, they ju it just needed to. If you're if you're going to tell this story, and I do get it, you know, that's you need a good motivation for someone to break, and this was this was certainly provided it. Um, you know, don't make it. Don't make it attractive. Don't make it pretty. But don't linger. Don't linger any more than it absolutely has to. In some ways, I almost felt like this film was kind of, you know, that poster and the premise and everything probably got a lot of the raincoat crowd into the into the Forty Second Street Theater, and then he's kind of rubbing their face in it when when she has that one um, vision where she's like staying there and she's just sort of like unbuttoning her shirt. And I imagine the audience is like, Hey, here we go. And then all of a sudden she has <laughs> there's this, nothing. there's a jump cut. I jumped. Mm -hmm. I actually did jump, which is pretty rare because I'd forgotten all about that, the music and everything. So it's kind of like rubbing your face and, Oh, you think you're going to get to see a little boob action? Well, you're a rapist. And, and that, you know, so this is an interesting film. Listen, if you're a film student and you need a film to write an essay about, you could have a good time with this one. There's there's some weird symbolism, mm -hmm. you know. At the very end, why was why was um her Lori who ends up you know stabbing her? Why was she holding the yeah. knife like in the yeah. most phallic way possible? I'm like okay, <laughs> this right. is, this oh, be an oh, that's what it that. Oh, I didn't even. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, with so her that's with basically... her legs spread. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it was interesting. So that was basically like her getting. Ugh, penetrated yeah. again in a way oh that stinks yep. poor thing mm. like it's she that poor girl i was like why is she living in new york alone like ugh. what's her story yeah yeah i because mm -hmm. really like ugh, it's rough and i wondered too why she never reported it or yeah know, i mean, did, I mean or why she didn't say anything to any of her friends or um, or anybody, I, I don't know. I just, I guess that, that would have been good to have some of that backstory. So we could yeah. kind of maybe, yeah, yeah. you know, there, maybe there were reasons. Right. I mean, right. Well, you know, Jeff, Jeff can back me up on this The you know, back in 1981, the support system for victims of sexual abuse is not what it is today. I mean, it's still not good enough today, but back then it was pretty bad. Rape was a seriously right. underreported crime. They were allowed to in in a in any trial to just try to trash you and blame you and make you look like the the instigator. It was it was a pretty bad time and, and movies were beginning to come out talking about that. So the idea of of a woman not reporting it, yeah, that's that's unfortunately probably still largely true today. But she came up with her own solution. Yeah. Although, you know, it's sad to think neither of those rape. Oh, no, actually not one of them did. But the first guy, I guess he got away scot-free. You know, yeah. and, and that's a realistic touch because most movies would have had he shows up again. In a, yeah. city of, a city of 10 million people, she manages to find that guy again. And, well, and he did him, say that. He, he said, yeah. I'll see you again. And so they did kind of make it seem like maybe... I thought well, maybe, maybe that's maybe happen. that's the thing. Maybe all these guys she was killing, she was just going to keep on killing him until she got that guy. Maybe. Maybe, maybe that was the motivation. Hmm. Hmm. 
Her yeah. being silent and the movie not feeling uh, any obligation to fill in all those silences does give it some room for interpretation, which makes it fun. Agreed. Yeah, she's definitely got him stuck in her head because she does think she sees him at least once, maybe twice, mm -hmm. uh, kind of fixate on somebody. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, talk about Abel Ferrara and the writers, Nicholas St. John, and apparently they were high school buddies. <laughs> uh, I was actually thinking maybe they're the same person because he literally, Nicholas St. John wrote like everything that he directed. He wrote mm -hmm. the driller killer, uh, miss 45, fear city, King of New York, body snatchers, dangerous game, the addiction. So, Oh, and here's one called the nine lives of a wet pussy. What? I think, I, I think that's from their porno days. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. I've oh. seen ones with five at the most. Nine is too much. Wow. <laughs> too soon? No. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, yes, totally. Like yes. My bad. Which is directed by Abel Ferrara as Jimmy Boy L. I, huh. Well, something you need a, a a pseudonym for, I guess. But yeah, Driller Killer is pretty legendary, and he followed that up with Ms. Forty Five. And then directed a couple of episodes of Miami Vice and uh episode of Crime Story and King of New York is is a pretty My favorite legendary film. Oh, and that has David Caruso too. Mm -hmm. Uh so any comments about the writing and, and Abel Ferrara in general or specifics or whatever whatever you want to say. Not a movie with exactly scintillating dialogue, but it you know I, I'm feeling this was a short screenplay. It probably did not uh, need 90 pages to to cover mm. everything, because but and, and a lot of it is, you know it's it's always hard to know who to give credit to. For all I know, the writer wrote that great scene in in Central Park down to every single edit, or he may have just scribbled down a bunch of guys walk around her in a circle and she kills them. Right, and it was all right. up to the director and the cinematographer to make it work. You real film is such a collaborative medi medium, as we've said before. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it, it does its purpose. Yeah. None it's, of the a, it's a simple likeable. story, but it's told yeah. it's told well. It, it really is. I agree. Definitely. Yeah, I, I always wonder about that because I've, I, I haven't read that many scripts. Um, mm -hmm. The ones I have read, like Richard Matheson or a couple of Harlan Ellison's, they're very, yeah. very specific about camera right. shots and – and uh, well, you better be Harlan Ellison if you do that. If you hand in something like that uh, as a spec script, they'll laugh you out of Hollywood. <laughs> but if you're writing it for your best friend, you can pretty much put anything you want in there, and it's okay. So, yeah. So in a script like this, is there that much detail, or is it just give a general scene? Uh, for instance, that you mentioned it, Bill. I think the scene in Central Park is beautifully shot, and we start with uh, one obviously sort of ne'er-do-well looking guy standing on the bridge uh or, or the the walkway above and he gives some yeah. sort of signal and she walks underneath when oh, she comes yeah. out the other side and the in the round kind of there's mm -hmm. four guys come out and surround her and then the the right. leader shows up and of course the 45 yeah. comes out at that point right. It's such, I, it's such uh, a great scene. I was yeah. like, wait, what do these guys think that they were going to do, though? I mean, like, it's insane. It's ridiculous. Really. I, I, like, I assumed they were going to gang, gang rape. rape. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I'm like, the, uh. Right. The, the, but the setup is so great because she is she's walking like a fashion model. She looks like a gazelle, like some beautiful, elegant creature walking without fear and all of a sudden surrounded by predators. If you've seen this a thousand times on the Discovery Channel, only the gazelle pulls out a magnum and starts blowing the lions away. <laughs> and, and, and does it with style. Puts her hand behind her back and just shoots. Oh, yeah, and it's was... like, oh. you just, I'm just like squealing and clapping my hands because it's so beautiful. <laughs> because I've always loved in horror movies when they can successfully combine beauty and violence and horror, you know, like Suspiria or something where you're, you're attracted to, to the, the symmetry and the color and, and 
the choreography. Yes. And at the same time, you're having this gore and blood and death being thrown in your face. It's such a gorgeous contrast. And it's so seldom done well. It was done pretty well in this film. Twice. That scene and the, the party at the end, I think, is, are just two, two showcases for how you can make on a low budget a stylistic, beautiful horror movie. Which I'm sure most people don't consider this a horror movie, but you know what? When I say they're wrong, oh, that's yeah. you know it, it definitely fits into a sort of a death wish or yeah. uh, type category. However, death wish was a little more uh, the, the Charlie Bronson character. Yeah, really was getting bad guys. Whereas right. by the time she gets to the party, if if you're male. Yeah, <laughs> you're going down. I think the movie's premise um, is every man's a bad guy, so you know, all yeah. is fair. That's pretty much, and the evidence yeah. would suggest she's right. Yeah. So this film actually was says it was first shown at the Cannes Film Festival on April twenty fourth, nineteen eighty one. Hmm. Interesting. And I bet they ate it up with a spoon. I mean, ser seriously, when you think of it, it's almost it does get a little ludicrous. We're at this party and we're just randomly listening to people and. Every random conversation is basically, this guy's a douchebag. I, I said I was going to get a vasectomy, but I decided not to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that one. Oh, that was gonna hilarious. <laughs> I First was all, like, this guy. Ugh. Who has that conversation at a party? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, and, the, and then the boss, like, uh, you know, oh. immediately tries to get her upstairs or does get All her right. upstairs, which is uh, his quick demise. Yeah. But that, you're right. That is a really good scene. All the all the the choreography that went into that mm -hmm. and uh, the the editing uh, works really well. And and the guy that makes this stupid comment about the vasectomy, he gets it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's one other guy, though, that seems like he, we don't really know anything about him, but I'm sure he's got something wrong with him. Yeah, well, he's a guy. There you go. <laughs> All right. And the way she disposes of that first body, that's that's pretty impressive, too. Actually, I love um, that she does it in parts. <laughs> and then they yeah. try to return her bag. <laughs> like, <laughs> it looked like he looked inside, too. And then he tries. I'm like, dude, you're so dumb. Well, that's, that's, yeah. You're gonna die. Yeah. Well, he was he was after her the whole time, and then when she that that grabbing that bag was his excuse to try to get close to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you only knew whose head I got in that bag. Cut him up in pieces, jammed him in the refrigerator as best she could. Uh, she had to get rid of the dog because the dog was finding the head in the in the closet or wherever it was. Considering that the sort of the notoriety of this film, there's not much information out there no. about it. Um, it's weird to me that in IMDb, the second leading actor is the dog. Yeah. And I'm thinking, Oh, this must be some famous dog. And you look it up and this is the only credit, <laughs> but he's, <laughs> but he's number two. On the list on IMDb. Oh, he's, well, he he's did also a good more job. convincing. Yeah. yeah. Like, he was good. I think it says somewhere that he was picked up from the uh, uh, dog pound. What? So, oh, all good. that's good. I hope he got a home after this. And not with that old lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another hey. finger? Oh, my God. <laughs> but I'm amazed. I mean, okay, so the guy who played Albert. The, the boss and Darlene who played right. Lori, they weren't great, but they were adequate, but this is the only movie they made. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of surprising. Makes you wonder if they were in like in some theater groups or something maybe, or, maybe. or what the deal was, but I, I agree. She was great. She didn't take any crap from anybody. Um, yeah. I loved her, man. I thought uh, I was in love with her. Yeah. Especially <laughs> the restaurant, the restaurant scene. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Oh my gosh. Yes. I was like, yeah, that girl. She's like my but I, Yeah, but I wish they developed a little more the level of their friendship or anything, and then it would have made more, it would have had more resonance at the end when she's the one that takes her out. Um, you know, but I, I guess that part of, part of um, Thana's, great name, by the way, Thana. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, part of her personality is she's really not close to anyone. You know, she's, she's a part. She's a good listener, obviously. Right. 
I, I, the impression I got was they were, they, I, I hate to say this. I mean, they probably liked her well enough, but they, you couldn't have conversations with her. The one uh, other woman that worked there was nice to her. Yeah. Um, but that they were asking her to go with them when to, to be nice. Right. Uh, right. And then when they all decided to leave and she didn't, nobody says anything. Are you sure you want to? Why don't you let me walk you home? Or why don't, you know, whatever. Yeah. They just, yeah, bye. Yeah. Um, so anyway. Well, I mean, I think I, I I really couldn't have a friend that I would have to baby like that. I just don't have the time or energy. Right. And yeah. living in yeah. New York, I think you just kind of be like, okay, all right. You choose what you want to do and you do it and you, you know, yeah, yeah. take care of your business. I mean, yeah. like what mm-hmm. a rough place. I'm, I, you know, I mean, yeah. maybe I'm too harsh, but. You know, they seem like they wanted to treat her like a normal girl as opposed right. to someone with a disability. So yeah. I do appreciate that, you know. I got that too. Yeah. That's a good that's a good take. Yeah. Um okay. So my favorite name for an actress is and I probably won't say it right. You won't. is Nike's <laughs> Zachamanaglo. What? Whoa. Did yep. you see Zach uh, Nike. She has she has uh, four acting, and one of them is in Trick or Treats, hmm. which is I don't know what that's not the one that we did. The hell is that then? Nineteen eighty two, babysitter stuck watching over a young brat on Halloween. A young um, brat, <laughs> but she had a kind of a significant career as a script and continuity department. Oh. She had like nineteen credits in that. I I just thought that was interesting. All right. A name like that jumps out at me. I can't help myself. Yeah. Psyche Zach Maniglou. Um, I don't know if we have too much else to say. Any final comments here? Like, like I said, this is, and I think Bill brought it up too, the rape movies aren't, <laughs> aren't all they're cracked up to be these days, especially, especially these days. And it, they're just hard to watch. And, uh, but this this sort of, like I said earlier, this sort of tried to make it a step above the normal, just total exploitation stuff. I mean, there's there's an exploitation here, but but um, there's also a lot of nuanced things going on too. Um, and and we talked about too. Like, I want to know a little bit more about her backstory and and why she can't uh-huh. why she can't talk. I mean, when she was stabbed, she screamed. So, um, yeah. Yeah. so, right. so she, she's apparently she, sister. she does have vocal. Yeah. Yeah. she said sister and she fell. So usually it's tra- a traumatic experience. Yeah, I, I, I want to kind of know right. what that, right. Right. you know, I want to know what that was all about. And that's a good point, but it, it, it really was a step above your normal movie like this. And she did, become i think bill you said something like she sort of became a superhero in some some scenes where she was yeah. all dressed in all black leather and the hood and gloves and boots and yeah, stuff like sexy. that yeah and she was like <laughs> that was that was the really cool parts to me was uh you know when she was finally coming into you know i'm gonna kill these guys these assholes yeah, you know? yeah. and uh that was oh, an interesting part yeah so her whole but, aff- affect changed. Yeah, yeah. It's like she uh, became I mean, it, a person, or she developed a new persona. Yeah. Um, well, I, Bill was saying that she was strutting like a model, whereas before that, when she walked down the street, it was sort of like meek, yeah, uh, yeah. short steps kind of thing. Which is a kind of a problematic message that empowerment comes from degradation and mm-hmm. trauma. But yeah, okay. You know, it's like I said, you could analyze this film and, and come up with all kinds of interesting interpretations of it because these are, you know, she's she's kind of feels like an archetype character. You know, it, it's mm-hmm. I just I enjoy it. I really like this film. Um, like like you were saying, not my favorite genre. I do like revenge movies, but um, just so stylish. And and maybe it's got a lot more sizzle and it's got steak, but that's OK. The sizzle is really good. And it's just, you know, the things, the things that I dislike about or not the film itself, it just, I, I feel really sad watching it because right. I feel like this was, this was someone who really could have been a major player 
and mm-hmm. um, you know she had her own demons, and and so and it's sad as you, as you get older, you start seeing just how many people fall to them, and you do, and you think they're but for the grace of God. And I think a lot of folks can say in their families, there's there's this tendency toward that, and sometimes it skips a generation, and sometimes it lands hard on somebody, and um, I'm glad it wasn't me. Because I don't think there's any reason to think I'd be able to. Everyone thinks they're going to be the one person. I, I, can, I can be a recreational heroin user. Oh, those other idiots, they, they didn't know how to do it right. But I, I've got it under control. And nobody does. You know, it's the nature of the beast. So, but um, she left this. She left this behind. She left a body of work. And uh, this, I think this will be watched and thought about for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Crystal, anything further? No, I'm totally like feeling feeling the same. Okay, it's really okay. good. I, I, uh, I do like that there wasn't any nudity in this, and that it yeah. felt like it was like. Re- I think they were whoever. I think this was they were trying to definitely put out a message and be artistic mm-hmm. with it, and not yeah. let that sort of stuff rule it. Because oh my god, okay, I do have to mention because we haven't talked about it that the blood was ridiculous. Okay, yeah. the blood was the worst yeah. blood I've ever seen. The paint. That was paint hammer, on the hammer iron. filled blood. Hammer blood. It, like, there was literally paint on the iron, and I died laughing. <laughs> so just just make sure, sure out there, if you're going to watch this, um, the effects are truly, truly horrible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But the, meat, the meat grinder was, was cool. <laughs> <laughs> when she cuts that up the blood. corpse, he's still bleeding blood red. I mean, I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Oh, so funny. Yes. Yes. The heart was pumping. <laughs> um, yeah, I like this too. And that's, uh, I enjoy this. And it's not that easy to find. Mm. Draft House Films put out a Blu ray in 2014. But now, if you try to search for it, you find like collector sites where it's like 50, mm. 80, 90 bucks, something like that. So, mm. but it is streaming. We found it on a really weird. I found it on a really weird website, which I'm not even going to mention. That's where I watched uh, it, yeah. I, I see that it's also now listed on IMDb uh, Movies, which is a subsidiary kind of of Amazon. So it's with commercials. It's free with commercials. Mm-hmm. So that's it, group Believers, for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film release between 1980 and 1989. And next up... We have one chosen by Bill. There are plenty of ways to stay in touch with us. Please send your feedback to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com. Or, of course, you can leave comments on the Gruesome Magazine's HNR and DOH podcast Facebook group, our website, gruesomemagazine.com, or, you know, leave reviews somewhere. And, hey, we do have a Patreon uh, account, so if you want to be a patron, Check that out on our website. And even if you can't afford that, share us with a friend. And be sure to visit our Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel. Everything yeah. is going up there. I'd say 80% of it is mm. our videos of yeah, our, yeah. Well, some of our pretty. pretty faces and some <laughs> of our ugly mugs. <laughs> All right. Catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the 1980s as only decades of horror can do it. Say good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Don't know why they want to persecute me because I don't talk to women. All women do is laugh and sing and say the word pussy. Yeah, ask any doctor and he'll tell you that. (laughs) <laughs> that, that, uh... is that okay <laughs> oh that was great oh, that, that was, was great awesome. that was great <laughs> oh, i should lie anyway. uh, thank you crystal yeah. <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever oh, but it, no. it was like no, i mean the, the star so. doesn't talk so you can't no, you, you know can't, no you're gonna be her. Her, uh... okay here we go